My name is Michelle Crawford. I am from Tama, Iowa, originally from New Jersey. New Jersey? New Jersey, yes. I decided after 25 years of being out of high school and my daughter's in college that I would actually pursue my original goal to be a teacher. So I decided to start with community college and transfer out to a bigger university once I've got my AA. So, and an art is one of my passions, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll take a few art classes and see how well I do now. It's just so late in life, and I, I love it. It's one of my favorite classes. We've been working with clay. Uh, we did a sculptured head, which was uh, originally a little difficult for me. I'm hearing impaired, so I don't always look at everybody's facial features. I usually tend to just look at their mouths. So I was focused more on that than anything else. Uh, but it turned out to be one of my favorite things to mess with. Um, wire, uh, I did a playground set. Uh, and that motivated me with my dad and an adult and a child going to a playground, getting balloons, things like that. So disassembling things, assembling things back up was uh, really interesting for me because I like to tear things apart and put them back together or remodel things. So that was, for me was a piece of cake. There was nothing to it. I enjoyed that, I think, probably the most of everything I've worked with so far. Besides my father, uh, you know, my son, um, there, I have a piece over there It says Angel on it. He passed away almost 14 years ago. And uh, so for me, that he's a piece of an angel for me. So it was easy to decide what I wanted to do. He helped my heart. So I did it in a heart shape with Angel written into it with a little cutout heart inside of the main heart showing that a part of me is gone, but I still live and I still beat every day. And uh, so for me, this is, is the best part because I can show motion, feelings through the artwork that I'm doing right now. If I'm not doing something at home uh, construction-wise to, to figure out how to paint something or build something, um, I'm doing it with pencils and drawing on walls and, you know, uh, remodeling a house at the moment. And I've got all the free will I need to do anything I want to do, right down to painting, you know. It, I can draw something on the wall if I want and paint it on there, it, it's no big deal. Um, which is nice for me because it gives me a lot of color and it makes me understand a lot more about death and, you know, focus on things that are the little details, you know, what makes that pop out and makes it bright and how do I make this look a little bit better than what it did five minutes ago, you know. So for me, it's, this is inspirational. I wouldn't know what to do without art and color and fabrics and whole nine yards in there so I think for me that it's going to be you know you have to look beyond what's right in front of you take it further you know look inside you too find what really inspires you and that's what I think a lot of art people forget is you know what inspires they did just draw something on there especially in an art class you know just draw what you want to draw but they forget where that meaning came from where did it actually come from so for me I think that's going to be the whole key is it's just to try to reach inside of them and pull that out so they understand that this is what inspires me. How do I make it better than I was five minutes ago? I am 45, so, you know, for me, by the time I'm done my AA, I'm going to be 47, 48 years old. And, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that I go to a school that's going to give me the best things I need, you know, for my career-wise for educational wise and also for my academic what what alternative academics I want to do so you know I've looked into you and I and I've looked into Iowa State and I'll have to make that decision when it finally comes down to who's going to offer me the best programs my name is Brandon Gokin I'm from Marshtown Iowa and uh, this year for sculpture class I've been uh, making different arts usually it doesn't it isn't uh, something I have at the top of my head I usually have to I usually have a concept or something I like a feel and I'll let it flow it together and different things depending on how I'm f f feeling is how the day goes and how I make the art turn into what it, what it really wants to be. Sometimes it's just kind of like past experience. Sometimes it could be like poetry artists like Edgar Allan Poe. My, one of my pieces is from past experiences in poetry. and. The other one, I just didn't really have a clue. I just took simple ideas and put them together and made, that's what it made. Well, I, the, my favorite one used is, was Asia Medical. It, it used 
um, a certain amount of wires to make the sculpture. It was, uh, that one was based on a, a feeling from one of my favorite poetry artists, Edgar Allan Poe. And uh, I wanted it to feel eerie. I didn't know what it was going to be at first, but as I got to going, the, finally I got to the end result and I was, very, I was very satisfied with it. The other one was kind of, I did, was trying to make a face, but I didn't know who I was going to make, so I ended up looking kind of like a motherly face. And I, the name I kind of knew right from the spot would be Frost. And, kind of like the um, kind of being like a motherly face with the name being a cold so like kind of a the cold concept of a mother being cold to us to a son for example so I kind of used that as past experience and put those two together to make something really beautiful out of it and made uh, made the colors two-tone to make it look real real realistic and uh, with the uh, other one I was using different art pieces of like old language like Chinese and ruins and then I just started using different tools to make make it look st stone look make it look like a kind of a stone hedge type of look and uh, then I put paint over it to make it um, so you could really tell the details because at first you couldn't really notice them so I, that's how kind of I got with the end result of the, the, the other ones. Art's important to me because it allows me to express myself it allows me to get stuff off of my mind things that I can't can't usually put in, put into ex vocal words. It kind of is kind of stuff that you can't really think of it or want at first, but you just got to just get a pen or get a um, get some tools and make something out of it. I will probably continue to use um, different forms of art to express myself because it's something I really enjoy. It's a, like a hobby to me. It's something I can do with ease. It keeps me hands on and relaxed. The field I'm going into is inspecting and stuff maybe from the, that field I might get inspiration from the things I do in it and I possibly might apply it to it yes
name is Shelly Finch, and I am um, a professional artist, and I also work at Emerson Process Management as an administrative assistant. I'm a native of Marshalltown, and I'm late to art in my life. Um, I only started about 15 years ago, and um, what happened was I was looking at eBay for baby clothes, and I just happened to look at the um, the self-promoting artists, and I looked at some of the pa paintings, and I said, you know, I think I could do that. I, maybe I could even do better than some of those. And so I just bought some paints, and I just started painting and um, sold my work on eBay um, and was doing pretty good for a while, but then they changed all their rules. And um, so I continued to do that and continued to paint, but uh, I took classes with Tim out here, uh, took painting and sculpture. And then I um, got involved in the Central Iowa Art Association. And so that's really how I came to art um, kind of later on in my life. And just, I learn something every, every time I paint. Um, I really enjoy it and I learn from other people and I watch YouTube and I learn new things. And well, when I first started here, I was really into Picasso and I loved Picasso and I loved Cubist art. And so I kind of created a neo-Cubist kind of thing and um, which isn't anything like what I'm doing now. Um, I, I got to learn a lot of different techniques and a lot of different artists in Tim's class. And it was really great working with the younger students too because they have an energy that's kind of contagious. And so it was really great learning along with them and kind of using some of that into my art. I think now um, what I'm really working on is color and texture and um, kind of using that to express emotions. And so that's mainly what my art is about. A lot of it has to do with looking at new and different kinds of art and just really enjoying the abstract expressionists and really um, experimenting with different types of art. Um, I do have a pull towards um, working on the computer and um, doing a lot of computer drawing and computer painting. Um, I'm just starting to dabble in that as well. So what I use right now is I'm painting on canvas with acrylic paint and um, inks. I use, um, you can find them in scrapbooking stores, um, the alcohol inks and um, just the distressed inks. And I really like the way that they mix with different colors and also keep their vibrancy when you try to dilute them with water. So it's kind of a watercolory kind of technique, um, but it's also, it has the properties of acrylic paint. So I really like that a lot. Okay. The inspiration for the show is very personal for me. Um, my father passed away three years ago. And at that time, three days before he passed, I had had major surgery. And so I was in a lot of physical pain. And when he passed, I was in a lot of emotional pain. Um, my son and my father were really, really close. And of course, my mother was grief stricken. And so a lot of what I felt like I had to do during that time was kind of whitewash and layer over my grief and anger and all my emotions. And, and this show is kind of like a, an outpouring of um, that grief and anger, but it's also, you'll notice a lot of white and a lot of white washing over color and layers and looking beneath um, and what's hidden beneath and how that tends to kind of seep out on the different paintings where you can't really cover grief and pain up all the time. It, it seeps out the sides and I think he'd be really proud of me, really proud. He, um, he both he and my mom are, um, they like Thomas Kincaid and they like very representational art. And so I think that maybe he didn't really understand 
a whole lot of what I was doing, but he appreciated that it made me happy. So I think he would be really happy. I have to say that art is very therapeutic. And so I work through a lot of that, creating different pieces of art and getting, um, not necessarily talking to other people about my grief, but kind of working through it when I'm creating art. If you like paint, definitely start throwing some paint around. It really helps. I think probably one of the most indicative paintings in the collection is, um, uh, it's a pink one and it is days I don't remember due to grief and anger. And um, that I remember I was in the thick of my grief then. And um, what I use in the painting is um, uh, calendar pages, you know, the um, daily calendars where you flip the page to the back. Well, I have an art one and um, I've kind of cut up pages of that calendar and I use it within the painting. And to me, the calendar pages and using that is about time and about time passing and um, getting older and maybe grief lessening as time passes, hoping that grief lessens as time passes. And it, it's all about, it kind of coalesces into a feeling of time passing. The thing about my artwork is that it's very non-representational, a lot of it. And so people see different things in it that I necessarily would never see. And so um, when I get asked the question, so what's this about or what do you see? I always ask them first because what they see may be 10 times more profound than what I ever meant when I was creating it. And um, I, I wanna go with what, what they see because if I tell them what I'm seeing, it might not be as um, exciting to them or they may not, might not like the, like the painting as much. I used, um, I cut out um, pictures of uh, dancers from Matisse's The Dance. And um, I like the figures in it because I like the way they flow and they're very graceful. Um, also, uh, I'm, have taught art appreciation and I love art history and I know that Matisse in his later life um, had to cut and do paper cutouts because he had really bad arthritis and so for me that also speaks to time and what happens as you grow older but I also like the figures in it and the way they look so that's kind of a double use of it and um, the wheel is kind of about time and time passage. And um, also, you know, it can represent a sun, day after day, the sun coming out. So that's kind of what it's about. Okay. I would say that one of my favorites is Days I Couldn't Cry. And um, it's about, it, it also is when I was deep in grief and um, I was feeling like I wanted to escape and escape Marshalltown and get away. But um, my whole family's here, and so I felt like I was kind of trapped in this perpetual grief. And um, my English professor when I went to college in Missouri, um, his name is William Trowbridge, and he, it, he was the poet laureate for Missouri. And so the words that are in the painting are from one of his poems. And it talks about um, this crummy town and getting out of it. And so that, that's one of my favorites. I love Marshalltown, but that was just how I was feeling at the time. Yeah.